So Google just made some major updates to Gemini. They've rolled out Canvas and audio overviews directly into the Gemini app and made Gemini 2.0 Flash native image generation available to all users, which as we'll see is already stirring up some controversy. Meanwhile, NVIDIA introduces their new generalist foundation model for humanoid robots, Groot and One. And lastly, OpenAI warns that if AI copyright laws become too strict, the US might fall behind China in the AI race. Let's get into it. So Google DeepMind just rolled out Gemini 2.0 Flash with native image generation to all users. You can try it out in Google AI Studio or via the Gemini API. What makes this model so special? Well, let's take a look. According to Google, Gemini 2.0 Flash combines multimodal input, enhanced reasoning, and natural language understanding to create images. So this is an image generation model with enhanced reasoning capabilities, not something you see very often. Here they show its ability to generate stories and illustrations while keeping the characters and settings consistent throughout. This is something image models typically struggle with, but as you can see from this example, the goat in part 1 is the exact same goat in part 2. There's literally no differences even though the angle or pose is changed. Plus, notice how the model is generating text along with the images, creating a multimodal storytelling experience. In another example, they show that you can edit images from text. They refer to it as multi-turn conversation image editing. Essentially, you can just tell the model what change you want to make in your natural language, and you can do this multiple times. The model will maintain context and consistency throughout the whole conversation. Again, something most image models struggle with. Now, in this example, they show off the model's world understanding. Gemini 2.0 Flash leverages world knowledge and enhanced reasoning to generate detailed and realistic images. In this instance, Instance, it's generating a recipe step by step with images on the way to give the user a better sense of what his plate should look like. I can tell you as someone who isn't well versed in the kitchen, this is a game changer. Finally, its ability to accurately render long sequences of text is state of the art. This is extremely valuable for advertising, creating social media posts, and more. Also, it's again, something that most image generation models struggle with. I mean, just last year, these models could barely write happy birthday without messing it up. We've truly come a long way. So overall, thanks to this model's enhanced reasoning capabilities and broad knowledge base, it's able to generate very detailed, accurate, and contextually appropriate images. Its ability to maintain character consistency in storylines, seamlessly edit images through natural language, and accurately render long sequences of text makes it one of the most advanced image models available today. Now, the reason this release has been causing some controversy online is because people realized that they can use this model to actually remove watermarks from images. As this article states, Gemini 2.0 Flash will uncomplainingly create images depicting celebrities and copyrighted characters, and, as alluded to earlier, remove watermarks from existing photos. Here's an example of this Shutterstock image of a cat that you would have to pay for to use. But with Gemini 2.0 Flash, you can simply ask it to remove the watermark and it will fill in the missing details. Honestly, I don't see how this lasts. I mean, watermarks exist for a reason. But let me know what you guys think about this in the comments. Now, Google also introduced two new features to Gemini. Canvas, a new interactive space for creating and refining your documents and code, and Audio Overview, which transforms your files into engaging podcast-style discussions. So, Canvas isn't exactly a brand new idea, ChatGPT has it, and Anthropic has its own version, Claude Artifacts. It's essentially a separate window that pops up, displaying the model's output, which you can then edit and refine in real time without cluttering the main chat. This makes it much easier to work with long-form text, iterate on ideas, or tweak code while keeping the conversation clean and organized. Now, Audio Overview, the feature in Notebook LM that turns your documents into engaging podcast-style audio discussions, is now also available in Gemini. You can even combine it with deep research. So not only can AI conduct research autonomously on the web for you, but it can now relay its findings in an engaging podcast-style discussion. Pretty insane. Now, there were some other pretty big model releases from this week. Mistral launched Mistral Small 3.1, a super fast, cost-efficient, and high-performing model. They state, the model outperforms comparable models like Gemma 3 and GBT 40 Mini while delivering inference speeds of 150 tokens per second. And of course, as per usual with Mistral, the model is open sourced under the Apache 2.0 license. 
As you can see from this graph, it's outperforming other state-of-the-art models of its size on the GBQA benchmark, which consists of PhD-level science questions, and it's doing this with much lower latency. Here are some more popular benchmarks, like the Simple QA, MMLU, Human Eval, Math, and more. It's basically on par with GBT40 Mini and Gemma 3 on these benchmarks, but again, with much lower latency and better cost efficiency. Overall, this is a fast, cost-effective, and high-performing model, perfect for on-device use cases and building your own AI applications. Mistral never fails to impress. Another big model release we got from this week was from Chinese company Baidu. Baidu launched two new AI models, Ernie 4.5 and Ernie X1. Ernie 4.5 is their natively multimodal foundation model, and Ernie X1 is their reasoning model. According to these benchmarks, Ernie 4.5 performs on par with OpenAI's GPT 4.5. But the craziest part isn't just the performance, it's the cost. The model matches GPT 4.5's performance for just 1% of the price. It's literally 99% cheaper. And their reasoning model, Ernie X1, reportedly performs on par with DeepSeek R1, but at half the cost. I actually made an entire video on this already, where I go deeper into the model release and break down the bigger picture of the AI price war between China and the US. So if you haven't seen it yet, definitely check it out, I'll pop it up on screen right now. But what's clear is that China continues to undercut American AI companies, and this aggressive pricing strategy could have massive implications for the global AI market. Now, in the world of humanoid robotics, a world that is progressing at an insanely fast pace right now, there were a ton of developments to cover. Starting with a new demo of Boston Dynamics Atlas robot performing multiple complex and intricate movements. As you can see, the robot is able to crawl around on the floor on its hands and knees, and even does a somersault. It performs various other impressive movements as well, like a side flip and even a handstand. The video then ends with it literally breakdancing on the floor. So it's been a while since we got a new demo from Boston Dynamics, but they've clearly been hard at work, and Atlas's movements are looking smoother than ever. Now, Unitree, another big player in this space, showcased the world's first standing side flip from a humanoid robot this week with their Unitree G1 model. This is an incredibly impressive feat. We just saw Atlas do a side flip from off the ground, but this is a standing side flip. I mean, if you showed me this a year ago, I would have 100% thought it was CGI. Again, the progress we are making with humanoid robots is insane. It kind of reminds me of the early days of AI video generation, where everything was terrible and all of a sudden, over the course of like half a year, we went from blurry, clunky clips to near photorealistic AI generated videos. It feels like we're seeing that same explosive progress but with humanoid robots. Now, these weren't the only developments this week. We also saw Engine AI's PM01 humanoid robot performing the iconic Axe Gang dance from the movie Kung Fu Hustle. You may have already seen this clip, I played it in my last video, but this is seriously impressive. The robot is able to autonomously perform an entire dance routine with relatively complex and rapid movements involved. So humanoid robots can now flip, dance, and move in a way that seemed impossible just a year ago. The progress we're seeing is insane, and the next step is giving these robots the ability to generalize in order to be truly useful in the real world. This is something multiple companies are currently working on, like Figure AI, Google DeepMind, and even NVIDIA. At NVIDIA's recent GTC keynote, the CEO Jensen Huang unveiled a new generalist foundation model for humanoid robots called Groot N1. Check this out. NVIDIA Isaac Groot is a platform of sim-ready data, simulation frameworks, and synthetic data generation blueprints, and pre-trained models. NVIDIA Isaac Groot N1 is an open generalist foundation model for humanoid robots. Groot N1 features a dual system architecture for thinking fast and slow, inspired by principles of human cognitive processing. The slow thinking system lets the robot perceive and reason about its environment and instructions, and plan the right actions to take. The fast thinking system translates the plan into precise and continuous robot actions. While internet scale training data provides common sense and reasoning, it doesn't teach robots specific actions or control. So we need better data and more of it. Human demonstration data is limited by the number of hours in a day. With Groot blueprints for synthetic data generation built on NVIDIA Omniverse and Cosmos, 
we can exponentially multiply a small number of real-world data captures into a massive, diverse training data set. Groot N1's generalization lets robots manipulate common objects with ease and execute multi-step sequences collaboratively. across many environments, and even multiple embodiments. And with synthetic data generation and reinforcement learning, humanoid robot developers can post-train Groot N1 for their specific robot and tasks. The age of generalist robots is here, driven by developers building on NVIDIA Isaac Groot. So yeah, I honestly think we're only a couple of years away from seeing these robots enter people's homes and the workforce. Obviously not at a wide scale just yet, but once deployment begins, production will only ramp up from there. Now speaking of Nvidia, they might have a new competitor to worry about. AWS just unveiled their new AI chip called the Tranium that claims to perform on par with Nvidia's H100s at 25% of the price. So we really don't know much else about this chip announcement besides the fact that it's a massive undercutting and a clear sign that competition in the AI hardware space is heating up. We'll definitely be keeping our eye on this. Now, before we get into OpenAI's warnings about AI copyright laws and what they're proposing to the US government, we have to talk about this insane post from Sakana AI. You might know of Sakana AI from their AI scientist, and this AI scientist they've created has just generated its first peer-reviewed scientific publication. This is a major milestone. As they state here, to our knowledge, this is the first fully AI-generated paper that has passed the same peer-reviewed process that human scientists go through. Now, they actually submitted three papers generated by the AI scientist for review, and only one out of the three passed the bar for acceptance. And the one paper that was accepted had to be withdrawn because, well, it was AI generated. They state, this is because they were AI generated, and the AI and scientific communities have not yet decided whether we want to publish AI generated manuscripts in the same venues. So we're getting to a point now where AI is able to conduct high level research autonomously and perhaps even produce a publishable report of its findings. This has prompted the AI and scientific community to start thinking about how all this is going to work. Will AI and humans abide by the same peer-reviewed standards? Or will AI-generated research require a separate evaluation process? These are certainly tough questions, but questions that need to be answered sooner rather than later. Also, let me know what you guys think about this. It's definitely a gray area, and I'd love to hear different perspectives. Finally, we have to talk about OpenAI's proposals for the USAI Action Plan. This document is extremely long, but there's only two sections that really stand out. Here's one of them. OpenAI states, As with Huawei, there is significant risk in building on top of DeepSeq models in critical infrastructure and other high-risk use cases, given the potential that DeepSeq could be compelled by the CCP to manipulate its models to cause harm. And because DeepSeq is simultaneously state-subsidized, state-controlled, and freely available, the cost to its users is their privacy and security. As DeepSeq faces requirements under Chinese law to comply with demands for user data and uses it to train more capable systems for the CCP's use. So, I mean, this is starting to sound a lot like the whole TikTok situation. It will be interesting to see if any regulatory action comes out of this and if it will actually be effective. The other area I wanted to touch on was, of course, the AI copyright laws. So OpenAI lists here the advantages that China has in, I guess, the AI race. And one of those advantages is, as they state, its ability to benefit from copyright arbitrage being created by democratic nations that do not clearly protect AI training by statute, like the US, or that reduce the amount of training data through an opt-out regime for copyright holders like the EU. The PRC is unlikely to respect the IP regimes of any of such nations for the training of its AI systems, but already likely has access to all the same data, putting American AI labs at a comparative disadvantage while gaining little in the way of protections for the original IP creators. So what do you guys think about this? I mean, they do make a good point. If data is truly that important, then putting stringent copyright restrictions on the data that AI can be trained on will certainly give China, who doesn't need to respect those regulations, the upper hand. 
especially since they're already closing the gap with America in terms of AI capabilities, and have potentially even surpassed them in areas like robotics and model efficiency. And given the stakes of this AI race, I think we should probably hold off on implementing any regulations that may hinder AI progress. But then again, my channel name is AI Copium, so I'm definitely biased. Now, to close out the video, and while we're talking about OpenAI, it was recently announced that the courts have rejected Elon Musk's attempt to stop OpenAI from restructuring into a for-profit company. Or as OpenAI puts it, Elon's latest attempt to slow down OpenAI. Now, there's two sides to every story, both of these guys have good reason to be upset with each other, but at least legally speaking, their feud has ended. I'm sure this won't be the last we hear of Musk trying to mess with OpenAI though. Anyways, that's all the AI news for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please feel free to leave a like. And as always, if you want to stay up to date on future AI news just like this, make sure to hit that subscribe button.